Greetings, my excellent friends, and welcome to Professional Photography Tips. My name is Josh Cripps, and you can find me on Instagram and Facebook right here at Joshua Cripps Photography. Now, in the past, I've talked extensively about what I think is the number one rule in composition, which is fill the frame with what you like. In fact, I like this rule so much, I made a video about it. And if you haven't seen that video, go ahead and click right here on the screen. That'll take you to that video so you can know exactly what I'm talking about. Now, that works really well when you have one obvious dominant subject. But what happens if the thing that you like is actually two things? Where do you place two subjects in the frame in order to create a pleasing composition? That's exactly what we're gonna talk about today. Now there are many, many, of course, philosophies on how to do this, but a tried and true method that you can put to use in your nature photography is to basically use a rule of thirds to create visual tension and diagonal pull. And what I mean by that is basically you divide your frame up into a series of, you know, your rule of third grid like this. And when you've got those two subjects, you put one of them here in the lower the lower uh, corner and one of them here in the opposite corner up at the top. Now, of course, you can do this the other way around. You can, you know, you can flip flop those so that they're in the lower right corner and the upper left corner. Uh, the main thing is that they're in those third lines like that. Now, the reason for that is because what this does is it creates visual tension. And what I mean by tension is something that pulls your eye to a specific spot in the frame. So when you have a subject here and a subject here, what happens is it creates tension across the frame like this, which basically caused my eye to go ping-ponging back and forth across the entire frame. So if you were, for example, to take your two subjects and put one of them here and one of them here, what would happen is my eye would go ping-ponging back and forth like this, and it would never make its way to the upper part of the frame like that. And uh, similarly, if you were to put one of your, frame, your subjects here and one of your subjects here, now my eye just goes back and forth over here on the left-hand side of the frame, and it never comes over here, making you wonder, well, why the heck is this even included in your photo if my eye is never drawn over here? So that's the beauty of using this simple diagonal rule like this because it makes your eye ping pong across the entire frame. Now you might be wondering, well, if I want my eye to ping pong, ping pong across the whole frame, why wouldn't I put one subject down here and one subject up here? That way I've got, whoa, all of that visual travel all the way across the frame. Well, that's a great question. And the reason you wouldn't wanna do that is because of something called visual balance. We'll talk about that more in another video and another tutorial. Uh, for the time being, suffice it to say that when you do that, it basically cre it creates uh, claustrophobia for your viewer. When there's not enough space between the subject and the edge of the frame, like this, uh, 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 we don't we say there's not enough breathing room. So, you, of course, you can fudge these rules. It's not a hard and fast rule, but the idea is sort of use this as a general guideline, and that will really help draw your viewer's eye all the way across your frame. So let's take a look at a couple of uh, user of uh, viewer submitted photos uh, from the Professional Photography Tips group on Facebook, and we'll take a look at how this rule can be put into practice. So the first one here, we've got a cool shot from Hugh Mobley. Uh, this is an awesome, beautiful sunset. And here when I look at this photo, I have two things that instantly catch my eye as subjects, right? One is the guy over here, and one is that bright sun over here. So those are the two things that stand out to me as the subjects of the photo where my eye goes. And now what about placement? Here what's going on, we've got definitely that visual pull, that tension across the frame. But you can see how in this case, the two subjects are almost completely at the same level horizontally, which means my eye doesn't really have an opportunity to travel up here. Now, it does travel down through this edge of the frame because of the line of the breakwater here, so that's good. But in terms of the main pull, I'm going back and forth horizontally here. You can also see that if I, well, let me delete all that crud that I've drawn on there. You can see how close the guy is here to the edge of the frame and how close the sun is to the edge of the frame here. So this is an example of that feeling of claustrophobia. There's a lot of space on this side, and it's not balanced by the little amount of space on that side. Same here, a lot of space between the sun and the middle of the frame, and just a teeny little bit of space on that side of the frame. So 
If you come back to this situation in the future, Hugh, something you could try would maybe be to take a step to your right and a step up, which would put that guy maybe somewhere right about here, kind of in that lower right-hand third. Then pan your camera to the left and pan it down a little bit, which helped the sun move up somewhere like this. That is the worst sun I have ever drawn in my life. Anyway, and that would help create that diagonal tension across the frame like that. That would get my eye bouncing through the entire image, whoops, instead of just back and forth across the center. Cool. Let's look at the same idea with this really awesome shot from Dan Davenport. Now, Dan is stationed in McMurdo in Alaska, so he's got an opportunity to see some things that many of us will probably never see. So when you guys look at this photo, what immediately jumps out at you as the main subject? Well, to me, it's this cross here, and there's this kind of, my attention's kind of being split over here, but the main thing that catches my eye is this bright orange snow here. Now, of course, the aurora catches my eye a little bit too, but really I'm drawn to this brightness here. So what I'm happening is I've got this tension going on across the frame here, but see how close, now this is, this is pretty good because you have one in the upper right and one in the lower left. So that's the right idea for the tension. But because these are both so close to the edge of the frame, I can't help but wonder, you know, what, if I expand the canvas a little bit, you know, what's going on? What, is the, what does the rest of this look like? I would really love to see all of that here in the frame. And I'd also love to see what's going on over here. Is it the base? Is it, so maybe if you had taken a small step to your right to move this cross into the sort of the upper right third there and then panned over again so that we could see more of what's going on in the base there, that would really be a perfect example of that uh, cross photo visual tension, but without the, uh, with a little bit extra breathing room so that it, my eye doesn't wonder, well, what's on the outside of those frames? But otherwise, that's a really, really awesome looking shot and what a cool experience I'm sure it is to be down in McMurdo. So thanks for that, Dan. All right, now the last photo that I wanna show today is from Josh York uh, and he's done in this situation a very nice job of following this rule. We've got two obvious subjects here, right? We've got ourselves a nice dark tree that stands out as a subject because it's against that dark background. And we've got the center of the Milky Way galaxy here. So you can see that Josh has set this up. We do have that cross photo diagonal tension, but what are you noticing about the placement of this, uh, of these two subjects? That's right, if I draw, if I kind of draw real quick guidelines for where these subjects are located, well, Okay, so this one is, it's, it's, well, that's not my best line ever, that's for sure. Let's, let's go a little bit more like that. Okay, so from top to bottom, they're spaced pretty well along the thirds, but what about from left to right? Yeah, there's a little bit more space over here, right, than there is over here. So that's that visual balance kind, kind of rearing its uh, beautiful head again. So what I might recommend for you there, Josh, is... Keep this same basic idea because this visual tension going across a frame like that is fantastic. But just because of that sense of visual balance, I might bring in this side of the image a little bit, something like that. Well, now actually in a perfect world, I would love to just see more stars over here on the right. Uh, so maybe you have another frame where you've got more stars on the right. If so, I would definitely run with that one. Um, but if you don't have that, you can definitely achieve that balance by just bringing in that edge a little bit. So let's take a look and what you guys think. Now this is of course just my opinion as always. If you, if you like it better this way, go for it. It's your art. But for me, this makes it a little bit of a tighter composition without the excess space over here on the left that is not being balanced by that space on the right. So that's pretty much all there is to it, you guys. You can use that very, very tried and true technique when you have two subjects to balance them across the frame to create visual tension and to make your viewer's eye travel around the entire photo. So that's it for this time. I hope you guys really enjoyed that photo. If you enjoyed, uh, excuse me, if you enjoyed this video and those photos, um, 
You can subscribe to this channel and share this video with your friends. If you would like a chance for your photo to be critiqued and uh, given some helpful suggestions to here on Pro Photo Tips, you can join our Facebook group and you can also get helpful commentary from your peers and other great photographers. And don't forget to join my newsletter where you can get all kinds of great tips and assignments that you can do to improve your own photography. Until next time, you guys, have fun and happy shooting.